Hello, and welcome to the seventh video in the C++ for Beginners series. In this video, we will be going over the use of multiple files to make our code more manageable. We will be reusing some of our code from past videos and making a new class. Don't worry, this class will be bare bones compared to the ones we looked at in the last video. We will then break the class out into separate files and go over the resulting header and source file. Finally, we will move another function we created in an earlier video into separate files that are not part of a class. So I've went ahead and created a new project and named it 07 Multiple Files. And here we just have our standard uh, framework that Codebox usually provides us. So I'm just going ahead and modifying this program a bit. Give us a couple of lines of output so we can test our functionality. Just going to compile and run this quick, as expected. Okay, what I really want to get to is we're going to borrow some code from our third video, Variables and Functions. If you open up that, if you have it, or I'll have the code on the website if you do not. The function I'm looking for is the pad output we created. If you remember, pad output just basically iterated through a loop the number of times of the parameter that we fed in lines. So say we fed in 10 lines, it's just going to go through the soup 10 times. And it's just going to add an NL. So it's just basically like the name is padding out, but let me copy that. I'll move it over into our program. And if you want, you can also grab the declaration. Or you can just type, it's just one line. Now, and we put 10 lines in. File and run is remember we just get 10 lines in between. All right, but that's not the point of this video. It's just getting set up so you can kind of follow along. However, there is one thing I'd like to change quickly. Instead of pad output, let's rename this so it's a little bit more descriptive. One trick you can do, if you just, as you notice, we got pad output three times. In this case, it's not that big of a deal, but imagine you had a program where this occurred 50 or hundreds of times. What you can do is just highlight the term, right click, and go down to code refactoring, rename symbols. And here we can just simply rename all the occurrences of pad output. So I think I'm just going to name this add line. All right. So here we go, add line. I'm just going to compile and run again to make sure I didn't break anything. And it works as before. Okay, and the first thing I want to do is create a new class. We're going to call it utility. And this you should remember pretty much from the last video. We need brackets, and again, it automatically puts the semicolon in. And if you also recall from the last video, we'll need an access specifier public. Because this simple class, we're just going to have everything be available public. My thought is once we break this out into separate files, we can put maybe a bunch of other similar functions like this, just, just some utilities. I mean, you could also name this tools or whatever you want, but uh, the idea is just to have some functions that we can call from into various programs. We can just basically copy our entire function, our new adline function, or new named adline function, and paste it in the public section under our class. Okay. Now we will no longer need the function at the bottom, and we also no longer need the declaration since the class is actually on top of main. Because you remember, C++ when it's compiling, reads programs sequentially. So since class is above main in this case, it will already know about its existence. Okay, so now down in main, if you recall from the last video, we're gonna have to make an object of our utility class. In this case, I'm just gonna call it util. And also, since we want to access the add line, if you can remember, we have to actually use the object in the dot operator. So we want to call the add line from the class util now. And again, it will take 10 lines. So if we compile and run it, as expected, we get the exact same functionality. But this time, however, the add lines is coming from the class utility. Okay, that was basically a review of class with a very simple example. Let's move on now to the purpose of this video, and that's to move this into a separate files. So the easiest way to do that is file, new, class. We're going to create a new class. So again, we're just going to use the utility name. And a couple things to check for here. 
since this is a real simple class and I like write my own destructors anyway, just uncheck virtual destructor and has destructor. And another thing to make sure, make sure this box is checked. By default, it may be unchecked the first time you create a new class, but we just want the header and implementation files in the same folder as our main. That way everything will run. And everything else can pretty much stay the same. So go ahead and hit create. You might get a couple prompt ups. New class been created. You want to add to the current project? Yes. And just okay this. We want to add it to both the debug and release for now. Minimize this. And now you can see we have get rid of that, two new files, utility and class CPP. Right now they have no functionality. It's just a skeleton of it. One thing I'll cover very quickly though, and you notice this is the header file, the .h, utility header. And a header file has always got a companion CPP file with it. The header is basically going to contain like declarations, like previously when we had our function separate, we had to declare it on top of main. I think a header is the same way as that. And the CPP or the source code file will actually contain the definition of our functions. And another thing I'll explain very quickly, you notice this, this was added by default by code blocks. What this is, is called a header guard. And basically what it's saying is, if not defined, include the utility H header in the project. And here we're actually defining the utility H header. And down here is just the end if, a normal end if statement. This is just a comment. Basically what this uh, header guard is doing is, if you recall from some of the other videos, I, I briefly mentioned that when you include a header in your project, and say that header also has includes other headers in it, you can end up with multiple headers in your project. Well, that's fine, but just imagine you got a project with like 25 or 50 files, 50 header files. Well, some of those header files may actually include the same include files. So what that does is just, the compiler's gotta go through and eliminate, you know, okay, I already got this header file. I don't need these 15 others copies of it. So it's just more processing. And in the worst case, it could actually cause issues like some breakage or some kind of weird loops and stuff. So this header guard is actually a great idea. And again, in its real basic form, it's just saying, if this hasn't been declared somewhere else in the project, go ahead and define it. But if it has been declared somewhere else in the project, don't worry about it. We're good. And I'm going back over to utility CPP. This is what's called a constructor. I'll cover constructors more thoroughly in an upcoming video. But basically, constructor is just a default function that's called every time that the class object is created. So if you want to just set some initial parameters in your functions, or if you have member variables like we did in the car class from the last video, we could actually set them upon initialization. But for now, it's just default. But the one thing I want you to notice is how it's named here. So it's named utility, and we got the scope resolution operators before. So this utility function is part of the utility class. Keep that in mind because we'll be using that shortly. Okay, so back in our main CPP file, we're going to want to move this. So the first thing we need to do is move our declaration. So we'll just copy the first line here of the function. Put that in the utility H. Again, as I said before, we're going to put that in the, all the declarations. Just think of the H file as something that would go on top of the main function in your program. Since this is a real simple class, we do not need to protect it in private modes. So we'll go ahead and underneath the public, leave the utility there. Again, that's just a header for the utility function that was in the CPP, the constructor. We won't worry about that right now. So add your declaration. Be sure to include a semicolon. Then go back into the main. And this time we just copy the whole function over. I'll actually just cut it out of here. We'll put that, the source, this is called the utility CPP, or often called the source file. Again, we can just leave a constructor here. And just put that right underneath like this. And notice, too, that the source file already includes the utility H header. That's automatically generated when these two files are created in Codebox. But go ahead and actually copy this, the utility H line here, because we'll have to include that in our main CPP file as well. Because now we're actually including this file, which is here. So this will actually, behind the scenes, when we compile the program, the preprocessor will actually take this and deposit it into our main, just like we actually typed it ourselves up here. We'll actually cover that more detail in a later lesson as well. But for now, just 
remember that you have to include utility H in the main. And the other thing we'll have to include too, since we're using some objects of the aisle stream, we'll actually have to copy that and include that into utility H. Okay, in main CPP, now we can just remove the any residue class. And that should stay the same. Utility H should be good. I'll just tab this over so it's in line. Remember that's a constructor setup. And CPP. Okay, one more thing. Remember I said before, we we'll have to remember the scope resolution operator. Since add line is now part of the utility class, we actually have to prefix it with utility and add a scope resolution operator. Because the add line that we're referring to is part now of the utility class. Okay, so I think everything looks good. And again, th this should work as fine because we're declaring an object a utility, but this time it's just referring to the utility header instead of the class on top of me. So let's compile and run this and see if it works. And indeed it does. Again, we get our 10 lines as before. And as before, we can change this. And you can see we get about 20 lines. Maybe make it two. And two lines. Okay, let's take a closer look of uh, what we just did. First thing we did to our program is we add the add line functionality from our lesson three video. We declared it at the top. And we had the function on the bottom, as you can see on the left hand side. And we could call that add line function directly since it was part of the main CPP file. The second thing we did, we created a class utility, and we put that at the top of main. And under the public access modifier section, we added our function, void and line, int lines, and the loop body. So we made the add line function part of the utility class. But down in the main portion, we now need to make an object of the utility class in order to access the function. I just created a utility object named util. Then underneath our first line of the program output, you can see I used our object util using the dot operator, I'm calling the add line function, and feeding in a value of 25. And following that's our last line of the output, and return zero. So then when we compiled and ran the program, it ran as before, inserting 25 blank lines between the first line and the last line of the program. Then in the last step that we just finished performing, we wanted to create, we wanted to break that class out into two files, the utility H, the header file, and the utility CPP or source file. And we used the file new class wizard within Codebox to automatically generate the framework. And on the left hand side, we can see the single file version that we're coming from. And over on the right, you can see in the utility H that we're basically putting our declaration of the function within there void, add line, int lines. Then the utility CPP, we're actually putting the definition of the function. Then down in main, you notice we have to include utility H header. Up in utility H header, we also have to include the idle stream header. Then over in the utility H CPP, where I have highlighted in the red box, we had to rename our function the utility colon colon add line. So using the scope resolution operator to state that the add line function is part of the utility class now. Then down in main again, finally, it's just as before. The only thing that we had to change is add the utility header at the top. So utility header basically is taking the place of the previous class utility over in the left hand example. And the class utility in the left hand example has just been broken up into utility header and utility CPP. So I hope by looking at this example, it makes a little bit more sense what we just did. Okay, so that covers putting a function inside a class and breaking the class out into separate files within a project. Now, the great thing about that is we can use this utility class in any project. So in the future, we can just add these files, include them within our main project, and call it. So right now we only have one utility, and I know it's not that great, but it's just an example. But throughout this uh, series, we'll probably add more. So at the end of this, we might have a dozen or so, hopefully more functional utilities. But again, these are just uh, examples to help demonstrate the concepts. Okay, now finally I want to go over showing you that we can also add separate files that do not have to be part of the class. So we're just going to go ahead, new file. We're going to want to do 
first we're gonna have to do them separately so c c plus plus header okay we have to go ahead and give it a name notice here it wants the file name of full path so we click on this we actually open up our project which is fine so we can just give it a name here data types we just go ahead and save and notice it put the prefix it with the the folder name and just go ahead and click both these we're just going to want debug and release we haven't been used to release right now but these early projects are small enough uh just include them both so nothing breaks depending on how you got set up up here so go ahead and hit finish okay so now you notice we have our new data types header with the header guard included but other than that is blank so now we're going to want to go ahead and add yet another new file this time we're going to create a source file Pretty much using the same procedure as before. Again, we're just going to want to create within our project. Should name it data type CPP. And again, check both boxes and finish. And here you can see we indeed got a new uh, file, data type CPP. Okay, and this one's totally empty. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is actually include our header. We have to do this manually since we didn't use a wizard or anything. And one thing I'll point out too, if you notice still now, a lot of the headers have been uh, using these opening and closing brackets. That's because this is expected to be somewhere within the file system or within the search, uh, the scope of the search parameters that the compiler is looking for. And when we're including our own headers, just include them in quotes like this syntax, because this is just telling the compiler, look in the current folder for it, so that's kind of the difference here. So in the data type CPP file, let's go ahead and include data types.h for the header file. Okay, now for this file, we're gonna to wanna to open up our video three source again, the main CPP. I'm gonna put our data types in here. So just like before when we created our class, we'll need a declaration of the function, which is print, in print data types. But we'll also be needing some of these other headers up here because much of the functionality of this program is in there. So just go ahead and copy all these. We'll go over to the data types header. Right underneath the define data types include header guard, we can go ahead and include all our files that we need. And also the declaration statement for our function. Okay, going back over now. We can go ahead and we can copy all of this. We'll have to make some changes here, but uh, for now, I'll just just copy all of that code. We're going to paste that in the data type CPP file. So again, making sure you have the data types header included at the top. Paste that in. And notice here, since it's not part of the class, you can just actually leave the function as is because this is just a separate include file. It's not the class. So I just want to kind of point that out. There's two ways you can add files. And all these will get their functionality from the header file. So you don't have to worry about any includes here except for the data types header. And down here, since we renamed the pad output to add lines, we will have to change that add line actually function and we can just leave the rest here okay we can close out the project 3 main go back to our main here now also we'll have to include the data types h folder now in our main so you can go ahead and just add that under the utility so it should look like this I'm just zoom the text a little bit more so you can see Okay, and just to, to test this out, this is just a demo program. We're going to be doing something more with this later. Right now, I just want to kind of break it out to show you how you could do that. But uh, underneath our last line of the program, let's just go ahead and we'll go ahead and call our int print data types function here. So let's just do that at the end. We don't need the int, of course. Uh, need a semicolon. And the second thing we need to do is, since add line is now part of the utility class, we'll have to declare an object. So we can just do utility again. And we can actually call it the same name, utility. All right, util, excuse me. 
And then we'll just have to add it down here using the dot operator. So utility.add line. Okay, let's go ahead and compile and run. And now it works as expected, but do notice we're getting a we get our uh, second function right away and it overwrites the first one. It's not a big deal. Again, I just kind of want to emphasize the purpose of this video is more showing you how to break your functions and classes out into separate files than spending a lot of time fixing the main. But one thing we could just do quickly would be, uh, you know, copy that into main. I'm just simply using this other alternative format so I don't have to add the system into main. Not that it's a big deal. Either way it'll work, but uh, this this gets us the functionality we need. Okay. So if I compile and run, this is the first line of program. This is the last line of program. Again, that's from the class. So we're using the add line function now that's part of the util class. We're feeding it two lines. We press any key to continue. We just added the code. Then it just calls our new function the data types, print data types function. Okay, so I want to keep this video kind of short. Uh, it wasn't quite heavy into theory like the last video, but it's more of a practical how-to. So we've covered uh, how you can create two new files and include them in your program. First one, we put our function inside a simple class. And the second one, we just put the function by itself. So, but it's still pretty much the same concept. So functions like this, like classes are more for if you're going to have um, member variables and do a lot of functionality on there. Uh, I do have plans for utility class later on. That's why you just kind of put this simple one in there. Even though this one's simple and wouldn't need to be part of a class, it could also be in a standalone file. Uh, there will be additional functions added at a later point that will make your class more beneficial. So don't worry about that for now. Again, the main takeaway I wanted to discuss in this video was... Uh, just how you could break out your functions into different files. And while this example is simple, hopefully it emphasizes, you know, the power that as our program grows and grows, it's a little bit easier to work on and manage the files. Plus, we can easily reuse this. Instead of going like we had it here into our old project and copy and paste the code, I can actually save these off somewhere, include them in any future projects that we may want, which we will be doing down the road. But for now, I think we covered enough in this video. And in the next videos have been promising up to now, we're going to get to work on our portfolio project. And we'll just start out with making a basic menu and we'll incorporate the first uh, few functions that we've created here. Until then, see you in the next video.